Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on temperature sensors. My name is Jesse Baker, and I'm an applications engineer in the temperature and humidity sensing product line. In this video, we will cover power consumption and optimization in digital temperature sensors. Digital temperature sensors have internal digital logic that is used to properly calculate the output and control the behavior of the device. The TMP117 digital temperature sensor from TI is a good typical representation of the structure and behavior of digital temperature sensors with regards to power consumption. So we will look at this device as an example. On this slide is the functional block diagram for the TMP117. The transistor-based internal temperature sensor is sampled by the internal analog to digital converter, or ADC, of the device. This value is then adjusted for accuracy by the sensor's internal logic and stored as a register value that is accessible through the digital interface of the device, which in this case is I2C. A digital temperature sensor will go through two stages during its conversion cycle, wherein it consumes different levels of current due to different portions of the sensor being active. When idle, the sensor is waiting until the next trigger, either from internal settings or an external signal from a controller, to perform a conversion. In the active phase, the sensor is converting a raw voltage from the internal sensing element, typically a bipolar junction transistor, or BJT, to a digital temperature value that is adjusted based on the device's internal calibration information. By knowing the shape of these waveforms, it's possible to estimate your power consumption for any rate of sampling or device configuration. Let's take a look at the periodic current draw of a digital temperature sensor. The timing diagram here shows the current draw of a digital temperature sensor configured for regular temperature measurements. The two current levels, I idle and I active, that we discussed previously repeat regularly over an interval called T sample. Each of the current levels that occur over T sample have typical current consumptions, I idle and I active, and predetermined times, T idle and T active which we will use to calculate power consumption. We will calculate the average current value as the total current value of each of these phases over the sample period. T idle refers to the period where the sensor is in sleep or standby mode. T active refers to the length of the active temperature conversion period. The first term in the numerator of this equation for the average power consumption represents the low current idle period. To calculate T idle, we can simply use the difference between the total sample time, T sample, and the total conversion time, T active, as shown on the right. The second term in the numerator represents the active temperature conversion period. Consider the sum of both of these terms over the total sample period as a simple way to estimate the total average current. The values for I idle and I active can all be obtained from the datasheet electrical characteristics table. This table is an excerpt from the TMP117 datasheet. Similarly, the value or values for T active are listed as the conversion time or times in the data sheet. In most temperature sensors, we do not have the ability to change the active current level, I active. We can, however, affect the time of conversion, T active, by changing the level of resolution or precision of the temperature measurement. In the case of the TMP117, averaging is one configuration setting that will impact T active. In this table from the TMP117 datasheet, we have the option to choose no averaging, eight averaged conversions, 32 averaged conversions, or 64 averaged conversions, each of which impacts T active as shown. As we'll see, reducing these values can be a valid strategy for reducing power consumption and increasing runtime in battery-powered applications. Similarly, 
we can alter the idle time by increasing or decreasing the total conversion cycle time, T sample. In this table from the TMP117 data sheet, we have the option to set the conversion cycle time as low as 15.5 milliseconds up to as long as 16 seconds in continuous conversion mode. Also, some devices may allow us to change the idle current consumption depending on different configurations. For example, the TMP117 has two different idle modes, standby mode and shutdown mode. The device's idle mode is determined by whether the device is operating in continuous conversion mode or one-shot mode. Let's do a quick example of calculating average current consumption using the method we discussed before. In this case, we want to configure the TMP117 for a single temperature conversion every second in continuous conversion mode with no averaging. We can take our equations from before and our substitution for T idle and plug in all the values known from configuration and from the TMP117 data sheet. If we calculate and combine, we will find that the average current using these typical data sheet values is around 3.32 microamps. This is extremely low power, corresponding to potentially more than 2,750 days from a standard 220 milliamp hour coin cell battery. Let's quickly take a look at how this result changes if we instead configure the device for a single temperature conversion every second in continuous conversion mode with eight average conversions. We can go back to the TMP117 datasheet and substitute the typical value for current consumption in continuous conversion mode and the values for T active and T idle with eight average conversions. In this case, T active has increased and T idle has decreased, shown here in red. When we simplify the equation, we see that the average current draw for the sensor, operating at 1 Hz conversion rate in continuous conversion mode with 8 average conversions, is around 17.8 microamps, corresponding to more than 510 days from a 220 milliamp hour coin cell battery. Finally, Let's take a look at how the result changes if we instead configure the device for a single temperature conversion every second in one-shot mode with no averaging. To update our calculation to consider one-shot mode, all we need to do is go back to the TMP117 datasheet and insert the typical value for current consumption in shutdown mode, shown here in red. In this case, I idle has changed. We can again simplify and find that the current draw for the sensor operating at 1 Hz conversion rate in one-shot mode with no averaging is around 2.24 microamps. For comparison, this would correspond to more than 4,000 days from a 220 milliamp hour coin cell battery or a 32% reduction in power consumption when compared to operating at the same conversion frequency in continuous conversion mode without averaging. While the power consumption of all the ICs in your system are important, calculating the lifetime of your battery operated system based only on the temperature sensor would be a mistake. For simplicity, let's make some generalizations about digital temperature sensors. Typically, they will have a very low sleep or standby current and a modest active current. All systems with a digital temperature sensor will also have some kind of controller to read from the sensor and take actions accordingly. In the case of the TMP117, this is typically an MCU with I2C capability for communicating with the sensor. Many modern microcontrollers will have multiple low power modes, one of which may be when the controller is essentially waiting for a wake signal, during which the MCU consumes negligible current. When awakened but not taking action, the controller is in standby mode. It has modest current consumption, typically on the order of hundreds of nanoamps to microamps. When active, however, the current consumption can be from hundreds of microamps to even milliamps. So the primary goal of a low power system designed with digital temperature sensors should be to maximize the amount of time that the MCU spends asleep and minimize the amount of time the MCU spends active. The best strategy for this will depend somewhat on the power consumption and features of the MCU. For many temperature sensors, 
including the TMP117, the alert pin functionality can be used to wake the host from sleep mode whenever a measurement is complete. By taking advantage of this feature, the higher power consumption host can be left in sleep mode for the lowest power consumption and can only be active when new temperature data is available. With that, we will conclude this video. You should now have an understanding of how digital temperature sensors use power and how to optimize your temperature sensing system for lower power consumption. Thank you for watching. For more information and videos on temperature sensing, please visit ti.com forward slash temperature.